an update on Obama job approval rating in swing states. Romney's hidden advantage in our poll. And six in 10 Americans know at least somewhat well what Obama and Romney would do about the economy. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters. Well, Susan, uh, I'm here in Princeton, New Jersey, and you're in Washington, D.C., so we're covering the country as we talk about the state of the election now. Uh, those two states, District of Columbia and New Jersey, I should point out, are not much in contention uh, for the election. And we know that by looking at job approval ratings, because we just analyzed Obama's job approval rating across all 50 states in the District of Columbia and found some interesting results. The District of Columbia, where you are, has the highest job approval rating on average for Obama at 83%. New Jersey's clearly above average. It's going to be a blue state, clearly. But the swing states that we've looked at, Susan, uh, so far this year, clearly are right there in that middle zone when we look at job approval rate, are they not? You know, it really shows uh, that they, why they are swing states. And I think the news here is just a touch sobering for Barack Obama. Of the 12 states that we're looking at as real battlegrounds, the, his best state is Michigan, where his approval rating is 49%. And his worst state of these 12 is New Hampshire, where his approval rating is 43%. This is important because we know that voting follows, tracks pretty closely with presidential job approval. So he really would be in a more comfortable situation in these swing states if he got his approval rating there just a bit higher. Well, that's obviously what he's working on. By way of context, I mentioned District of Columbia, but Susan, I know you know this, the state where, other than D.C., where Obama does best is? I think it's Hawaii, is it not? 63%, his birth state, 63%. That's the highest job approval rating outside the District of Columbia. And interestingly, Mitt Romney uh, is not born in Utah, but he went to BYU. He certainly has Utah connections, and that's the state where Obama's approval is the lowest, down at 26% average job approval rate in Utah for the first six months of the year. So you see the distinctions there between those two states. That's the range, 63 down to 26. So there are big differences across states in the average job approval rating for Obama. For in the first six months of the year. And you know, you look at a map as you have on the Gallup website, and it shows what a polarized nation we have with, uh, with red states and blue states with such different opinions of how the president's doing. Now, you mentioned at the outset also Romney's secret weapon or something we haven't looked at yet. And what would that be, Susan? Well, you know, at this moment in the USA Today Gallup poll, we're using a measure of registered voters. There will be a point when we go to likely voters, and there is there seem to be an advantage for Mitt Romney in that, in that looking at the enthusiasm of voters about this election, Republicans are doing better. This is a big shift, by the way, from 2004, and especially from 2008, when Democrats had an advantage in enthusiasm. Now we see Republicans have taken over that advantage. That means Republicans are more likely to vote, and so once we put in that likely voter screen, he's likely to get a little bit of a bump. That's right, and that's not atypical. Typically, the Republican will do better when we look just at likely voters because they're more likely to turn out. As you say, in 08, in particular, Obama was able to neutralize that to a significant degree because he had a lot of enthusiasm. But looking just very preliminarily at our data so far, uh, Republicans are more enthusiastic. And we're asking uh, on our tracking uh, how likely are you to vote, just one question. And when we look just at those who give a 10 certain to vote, then Romney does get a slight bump or, uh, out of that group as well. So we won't know because we're not going to start looking at likely voters uh, in depth until October when people really begin to focus. But right now it looks like probably will give Romney an edge, no question about it. And, you know, Frank, sometimes people ask me, well, why don't you ha use likely voters? Well, I don't want to care. I don't care about people who are not going to go to the polls. So why is there a little bit? Why do you let a little more time pass before you go to a likely voter measure? Well, it's an interesting. It's a judgment call. There have been some past elections where we looked at them earlier. But we feel now that a lot of people have not focused yet on the election. And some of the questions say, how certain are you to vote? And some questions along those lines. And a lot of people don't know yet or it would be misleading. So based on that and some other considerations, practical considerations, uh, we think it's really best to zero in on likely voters when they get much closer to the election, probably in October, and that's what we'll do. You know, Susan, we talked about jobs. We asked people, jobs the, the number one issue. No question about that, is there? Oh, no, absolutely. Every poll we've done this year, people are focused on the economy in general and jobs in particular. Now, I wrote up a story where we asked people, do you understand what Obama would do to fix the job problem, the economic problems, and do you know what Romney would do? 
And we put the percent who said they understand very well and somewhat well together. And we said, hey, you know, six uh, plus, 60 percent plus of Americans say they understand at least somewhat well what these two guys would do. But if you just look at the percent who say they understand very well, it's down below 30 percent. So I guess the interpretation of the number depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah, it's definitely a glass half full, glass half empty. I guess I would say I find it surprising and a little alarming that at this point in the election, when after all Mitt Romney's been running uh, for president for, for the nomination before getting into the general election, that almost four in 10 Americans say they don't have much of an idea about what his jobs program would be. And uh, more than a third of Americans don't have a good idea about what President Obama's program on jobs would be. That is, it seems to me, a, a, a vacuum that is going to get filled in the next few months. Yeah, I'm certain they're going to be talking more about it, but clearly that's what, as we said, Americans care about. One last point, uh, Susan. USA Today has started putting on its website every day a, a Twitter analysis, an analysis of sentiment based on Twitter. This is the brave new world, isn't it, in public opinion? It is. And, you know, we, we know that it's not as reliable as uh, a nationwide poll, but it is one way to measure how what people are thinking, what they're saying, how enthusiastic they are. And so lots of experimentation going on. And how can you harness this, this deluge of data and try to make sense of it? Yeah, that's what I said when I gave an, an address at the American Association for Public Opinion Research, APOR. I talked about the fact that we've got millions of Americans who, are, who want to give their opinion. They're tweeting and posting on Facebook. So we would be derelict if we didn't try to look at the data and say, can we make some sense out of it? But it's clearly not random or representative. Although we, when, we, when we match up presidential approval with ratings on Twitter, there is definitely a relationship. There, it goes up on both, it goes down on both. So clearly when we understand more about this, I think it's going to turn out to be an incredibly valuable tool. And of course, not just public research firms like Gallup looking at this. Obviously, this is something the campaigns are really interested in mining as well. We'll keep monitoring that because obviously it's something, as you say, we're going to be uh, perhaps finding is highly significant in the years ahead. By the time we next talk, Susan, maybe uh, Romney will have a vice presidential nomination or maybe not. But nevertheless, we'll see where we stand when we talk next week. I'm Frank Newport, Gallup Editor-in-Chief. I'm Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. And this is Election Matters.